Now, let me just focus on this one quickly and move on, because this is important. <laughs> to all you Adventist men who act like conservative defenders of God, your wives must not have nails, long nails, your wives must not put on makeup, your wives must not do this and that, then you leave them and cheat with the women doing the same. <laughs> it is hypocrisy. You knew you want it, but you want to make your wife some crusader. <laughs> Yet you leave the house. I've been a pastor for 13 years. I have never caught any man who cheated with a woman that looked like the wife. She had hair longer than the tail of a horse. Her nails were dazzling. Are you with me? So be honest. Invest in the wife you want to see. There's nothing wrong with that. Tell your wife, I know the way I love you looking. Here are fans. Let's work on that. Why? It's in the Bible. The Bible says, for the woman was made for the man, and the man for the woman. Not for the church. There's no church in that verse. So in other words, a wife has a duty to look in a manner that pleases her husband. And the husband has a duty to look in a manner that pleases the wife. So you must ask your wife, how would you like me looking? Because it is you who must be pleased with me. And I must say, you know what? When you dress like that, when you do that, when you do that, man, you make me feel like I could marry you all over again. Yeah. Are you with me? Because I must be happy. I am married. My wife is there at the back. I'm happily married. I didn't marry my wife for you. She's not a church wife. She's mine. <laughs> I'm the one who must be happy. Because I live with her. You see her once every seventh day. I live with her every day. So when we are walking together at the mall, I say something. I say, you would look good in that. Why? I am feasting my eyes so that I don't have to look at anybody else. I know what I want to see so my eyes don't have to look for it elsewhere. So whether a naked woman passes, I don't care. I know what I want. And I am making my contribution to that appearance. So when I see your daughters here, I don't care. Whether she has a cleavage or she was whatever, I don't care. I, I'm, I'm, all I see is just another sinner needing grace. What, what, what can we pray about, my sister? Why? Exude the positives. Jesus has negatives to tell them, but he deliberately says, yet I have this little thing. Children, we cannot spend an hour disciplining a child, but can hardly come up with 30 seconds congratulating a child. Beloved, that's not right. The way Jesus speaks rebukes us. If you want to spend an hour rebuking a child, spend two hours celebrating them. As we head to the end of this message, then Jesus says to them, if you don't fix this, then he tells them different consequences. If you don't fix this, I am coming. I will take my lampstand away from you. Okay? He tells all of them, I am coming and I will do this. I am coming and I will do that. 